So I've been making models of platonic solids for the past few months. I initially started with wanting to build a wooden icosahedron, since it's my favorite shape of die in tabletop games like D&D, but the more solids I built and the more time I spent modeling new designs, the more I enjoyed it just for the sake of it. It's been a good excuse to get more experience with my laser cutter and 3D printer, and finally learn how to use CAD software, as in the past I've been stuck using simpler tools like Inkscape and Tinkercad that are honestly limiting my ability to make stuff quickly and accurately. Platonic solids are polyhedrals that are regular and convex. Essentially, this means that each face is exactly the same, and each angle between the faces, the dihedral angle, is exactly the same. For example, in a cube, or as we could say, a regular hexahedron, each face is a square, and all the internal angles are 90 degrees between each face, i.e. a dihedral angle of 90 degrees. Also, a square is a regular polygon, since all the angles inside are 90 degrees, and each side is the same length. A shape that is not a platonic solid would be a pentagonal trapezohedron, which in a lot of tabletop games functions as a dice for rolling percentages, or just the number 1 through 10 or 0 through 9 sometimes. Each face is a kite and has internal angles of 108 and 36 degrees, making the face a non-regular polygon. In fact, a d10 is the only die in a standard D&D dice set that is not a platonic solid. Since platonic solids have identical faces and angles, we only need to model two parts. The faces themselves, and a connector piece to link them together. These are the parts that I modeled in on shape. I have a part for the face, and a part for the connector. I've set up the document to be fully configurable with variables so that I can generate parts for any platonic solid at any size. But the most important two are dihedral angle and face insides, as they uniquely determine which platonic solid you are making. There are also a few optional variables you can use to adjust the size of the connector and face. Connector thickness can be used to make the connector girthier. Connector side length adjusts how long each side of the connector piece is, and also changes how far away the connector holes are away from the edge of the face. Connector height changes how tall the connector is, and also how far away the holes are from each other vertically. Hole diameter needs to be adjusted depending on how you want to connect the sides to the connector. The way that I do it is with these wooden dowels I got super cheap off Amazon. Screws would work and pretend to be more convenient for a sturdier build, but I personally like the way the build shape looks when it's all wood. Face side length can be used to change how long each of the sides of the face is. Bigger side length will always equal a bigger polyhedral. Since I'm going to be making an icosahedron, we can go to this variables document I created and see that we need a dihedral angle that is 138.189 degrees, and the face and sides variable needs to be set to 3, since all the faces of a regular icosahedron are triangles. Once you've configured the variables how you'd like, you just export the connector part as an STL file to later to be printed, and the face of the face part as a DXF to later be arranged in Inkscape. The only wood I have are these square foot plywood boards with a width of 3mm, so I arrange copies of the part into a square with that size to make sure I take full advantage of the size of the material, and don't waste any time cutting extra parts. I make the holes a different color than the face outlines, because in my laser cutting software, the different colors from the document will get turned into separate layers. Layers can have different cutting settings, and I specifically want to make sure that the holes cut before the outlines by putting the red layer first. Typically, printing all the connectors for the sides is the longest part. For an icosahedron, it has 30 edges, so we have to print 30 of the side connectors. That means it takes around 6 to 8 hours to print all of them. Cutting is significantly faster, but this time I messed up when securing the wood and it shifted during a cut. The next cuts went perfectly fine. Now that I've got all the parts prepared, I need to do a little bit of cleanup on the face parts, since they have residue from cutting and some splintering. I alluded to it before, but the basic process for assembly is just taking these wood dowels, pushing it through the hole in the face part into the connector part, and gluing the other side and clipping off the excess material. For an icosahedron, you have to do this around 120 times, and doing the joints by hand can result in a blister on the thumb from all the pushing and twisting, so I'd recommend gloves, taking breaks, or to use screws instead of the wood dowels. I have guitar calluses on my thumb to protect me, thankfully, so I fared pretty well. The last step I sometimes do is seal up the edges with craft glue, as it helps with rigidity and I like the way it looks. I even tried varnishing one of my other solids with the glue, but it doesn't look great and I should probably just try some normal varnish. This is my final build. I'm going to leave this one plain because I like the way it looks, but for many of the other ones I've built this way, I've used my laser cutter to cut felt designs for decoration. I've got this dodecahedron commissioned by a friend who really likes Magic the Gathering, Doom, and Ori in the Blind Forest. Now before I finish the video, I wanted to mention the other method I use for making polyhedrals. It's much simpler than the previous method, so I felt like it only deserved a short segment. Instead of making connectors for the faces, we can instead model connectors for the vertices and use the same wooden dowels I used earlier to connect them as edges. If you don't have a laser cutter, but do have a 3D printer, this is a pretty easy way to build a polyhedral. The only downside is that it's a bit harder to decorate, but I still love the way it looks. Well, 
that was it. I'm planning on doing some videos that involve a bit more electronics and programming, since that's my actual background. But building polyhedrals has been my hyper focus, so I hope you found it interesting as well. If you liked the video, go eat a hot dog.